question about it. So we are set to go. St. Louis in their home whites. UMass in the black and red trim. And the official today, Pat Driscoll, John Gaffney, and Bill Lovington on the call. So we're set to go with the winner moving on to the semifinals. Cap, early on, St. Louis with Travis Ford, what do you think they're going to want to establish? They want to get everyone a touch, and they want to go inside. The key for them is going inside, out. There you go. They fed the post, refeed the post, and get themselves open looks for three. We talked about it yesterday. When you go inside, kick it back out, it doesn't mean you can't go back inside, but it opens everything up to get you a good look, and they got a quick three. And that's a rare three from Yuri Collins. He is a true pass-first point guard, lightning quick. The sophomore to St. Louis buries that wide-open three as UMass has sagged off to look after Hassan French. See, a different philosophy defensively out of St. Louis than what we saw with St. Joe's yesterday on Trey Mitchell. They are not going to send regular doubles and triples in there. I think you'll watch an occasional double, maybe the first or second time each half. They're going to demand that their guys prevent the ball from coming in. Jordan Goodwin getting to the rack easily there, using the right and up and under. So it's quickly a 5-0 St. Louis lead. Already UMass in a different kind of situation, a different kind of game. And I'm, and I'm suspecting that UMass would probably want to push the pace a little bit more, or are they going to want to spend more time in the half-court offense? Uh, I think that they are just going to take what is given to them. They would like to go inside. Now, if they get a, a break opportunity, they will. They want to attack the rim. Gary Collins with the ball, kicking it back out. Jimmy Bell, number 32, excellent defender. Will draw Trey Mitchell. And again, up and under. And wow, good one. Off to a nice start. Two for two and 7-0 St. Louis on top. And everything's coming by way of going either to the basket or kicking it out from the interior. Excellent balance. An inside and a nice drive there. UMass needed that from Ronnie DeGray, the third. He had a really good game. Todd yesterday. He was making threes that he's taking it to the basket. He was outstanding yesterday. Ronnie DeGray, 19 points versus St. Joe's and really a big offensive spark that got him going, fitting two threes right off the bat. Ball knocked out of bounds and it's going to stay with St. Louis. Kind of like the ball move from St. Louis. And, Cap, you talked about it inside out. And it looks like UMass is really going to try to pack that lane and not let their bigs have an easy day inside. Hassan French has had plenty of touches, but no points. No, but he attracts attention. Here comes a double again out of UMass. Gary Collins off the mark just as the shot clock was ending. So a successful defensive stand for the Minutemen. Now they got to find that shooting touch that they had yesterday against St. Joseph's. That one rims out for Ronnie DeGray. How about Hassan French? Does it all. Bringing the ball up. He may end up being an NFL player one day. I'm not kidding you. Uh, teams have looked at him. He is built well. Goodwin goes to his arsenal and gets the friendly roll. So Jordan Goodwin already off to six points. Remember, 13 double-doubles this year. The two-time A-10 player of the week. Feeling it early here against UMass. And there's a guy that UMass desperately needs to be on track today. Trey Mitchell. Averaging 18 points a game. They go in the lane, and that one won't fall for Noah Fernandez, who had 14 points versus St. Joe's yesterday. Back to good one. Oh, when it's working, it's working, Cap. The and one off the bump after a Jimmy Bell screen. And all of a sudden, you're looking at trying to get out here to a 13-2 lead. That's a good, solid screen. And then there's the hit as the defender tries to recover. And he's just a click late. Contact, count it, and one. Good win, the senior out of Centerville, Illinois, averaging more than 14 points a game, 10 rebounds a game. 
and 30% from beyond the arc. So getting him off to a good start, not too shabby. You still got Javante Perkins, the leading scorer for the Billikens, at almost 17 points a game, who has yet to touch the ball or have any impact on this game offensively. And they're going to call this a two. So foot was on the line. So this will be for the three point play the old-fashioned Thought we were gonna see a four I play. agreed take a look at that on the next timeout but it is still a 10-point lead for the Billikens so UMass coming out a little shell shock the shots not falling as easy as they did yesterday against the Hawks big difference no shot at St. Joe's but St. Louis at a different level right now with their program Defensively, you hear all the talking from St. Louis. The lane is clogged up. Trey Mitchell can't even get the entry pass. As he's working hard against Jimmy Bell. Fernandez drives up and cannot get it to fall. You know if that had been yesterday, that was all that was going in. Early on, it's the Jordan Goodwin show for Travis Ford and the St. Louis Billikens. As the St. Bonaventure went earlier today, actually helps their cause. And if they win this game, they will see them again tomorrow in the semifinals. That will be a great game. 13-2, St. Louis on top. During the break, they did award Jordan Goodwin a three-point. So it was, in fact, a four-point play. His foot was behind the line, as Cap called correctly. So it is an 11-point lead after the miss by Noah Fernandez, who is really solid usually at the line, an 84% free-throw shooter, hitting the second. So UMass comes out now with some token half-court pressure, trying to slow down St. Louis. Gary Collins, an excellent ball handler, being harassed by Fernandez. That's over and back. Yep. No question about it. That was just good, solid, man-to-man -man defense. Oh, yep. You saw the foot. No question about it. So Collins loses his spatial recognition of where he was. An excellent defense by the sophomore Noah Fernandez. Transfer from Wichita State. So now an opportunity for UMass with a two or a three to kind of climb back in this one early. Do not want to dig yourself a hole against St. Louis. Remember, these two teams met less than a week ago in St. Louis with the Billikens winning it comfortably 78-57. Inside to Trey Mitchell. You saw all the white jerseys around him. He's going to garner a lot of attention. And back come the Billikens after that nice defensive stand. Javante Perkins' first shot off the mark, and it will stay with St. Louis. See, they're doing such a good job with one defender, Jimmy Bell. They are denying him the basketball with a philosophy that's called half man around. Ball is above the free throw line, you're playing on the high side. Below the free throw line, you play the low side, and you try and deny him catching the basketball. They've done a really good job, and then they've run a couple doubles now. Gary Collins already with five points, averages just about 4.8 points a game, so he already passed what he normally gives the Billikens on offense. It looks like they're going to leave him alone outside and make him shoot a nice bucket turnaround from Trey Mitchell, a sophomore from Pittsburgh. That's a really good move, and he has to be able to hit that shot because they're going to make it tough, as they said, getting the ball to him. Martin Linson just checked into the game. The junior from Dusseldorf, Germany, transferred from UNC Wilmington, and right before that, started out at Valpo. Comes in and gives him a big body inside, and he is fouled. A nice entry level pass by Collins. You see, watch Trey Mitchell. They're forcing him way out on the floor. They're not going to give him the baseline, and he turns faces. He's a good player, man. I mean, a really good player. So you're not going to hold him completely at bay. But I've got to think if you're Travis Ford, the Billikens, you're more happy with him shooting 10 to 12 footers than being down inside the paint and just laying it an easier dunking. Well said. You're starting to rub off on me, Cap. It's making sense. <laughs> Can you teach me how to ski? Here you go. 16-5, St. Louis on top as we approach 14 minutes to play here in the first half. As we remind you, St. Bonaventure winning the first game of our quadruple header today, and they await the winner of this game. And once again, Trey Mitchell going right at Linson. Much closer this time, and Hassan French is not going to be denied. You're not going to pull it away from that, young man. 6'7", 240. Good ball movement, extra pass. Collins left open. Misses that one, but Linson comes away with the offensive rebound and has it pulled away. 
Mitchell doing a good job there and not picking up the foul. Yeah, it was a really good offensive rebound, but you got to get rid of the ball immediately because there's two defenders on it. Fernandez trying to find space, drives partially blocked and cleaned up nicely by Ronnie DeGray the third. He's fouled but can't get it to drop for the three and one, so he will go to the line and shoot two. It's such a difference that 24 hours makes because yesterday everything they were doing was working. They can't get the lid off the basket here early. Ah, it just seems like a different field defensively as St. Louis just got all the white jerseys clogging the paint. And I think until UMass starts hitting from the outside, they're going to continue to do that. Gray hits the first. 62% free throw shooter coming out there, as we mentioned. A huge performance versus St. Joseph's yesterday. 19 points. Just a freshman from Parker, Colorado, by way of the Woodstock Academy. UMass, 25% so far here early from the floor. Yesterday, it was like 2,500%. Off to a fast start yesterday. If you didn't see the game, UMass came out in the first half on a 19-0 run. Blew that game wide open. Trying to stay relevant here against St. Louis and not let this thing balloon too much as it's a nine-point lead with 13. They're laying way off of Yuri Collins, and if he gets hot, it's going to be problematic. But right now, it is Jordan Goodwin that's putting on the offensive display. Already with 12 points and five of six shooting from the field. Mark Gasparini has checked in now for UMass. Gasparini, another big body for Matt McCall, who told me earlier that we're not going to win the one on one physical matchup with them. So we're going to try to get a little creative. And Debaji Walker. a nice little one-two combo. Collins drive, looks back out. This is just a really nice job. He used his dribble with a little head and shoulder fake. Pull up, pop, and knock it down. Travis Ford not happy with this foul call. Not at all. And that sends Debaji Walker to the line. Junior hits the first, so Matt McCall in a different game than he had yesterday. Travis Ford knows this team well. As we said, they played less than a week ago in St. Louis. But there's really, you know, Cap, as we've talked about it throughout this tournament, there's really nothing normal about this season with all the stops and stops and, and postponements. There's a look at Travis. That guy was a really good player, let alone being a heck of a basketball coach. That guy was a really good player and a really good guy. Gibson Jimerson, number 24, the redshirt freshman out of Richmond, Virginia, has checked into the game for the Billikens. So Travis Ford going deep to his bench early on as he gives Yuri Collins a breather. And you got Jordan Goodwin, who can slide from the three. Now he'll run the point. That shot up, doesn't drop, and it's brought in by TJ Weeks. Weeks, another player that got hot yesterday, ended up with 14 points for St. Joe's, but a big spark off the bench. Nice hang there by Javon Garcia. Getting their legs under him, getting a couple buckets. Got to get a couple stops. That's the key for UMass. Got to get stops. That pass intercepted by Gasparini. Back come the Minutemen. Weeks off the front iron. I thought that was too quick a shot. Jimerson thought about it, gets it back into the hands of Goodwin. Wow, easy drive, way too easy. Fred Thatch Jr., his first bucket. Yeah, Fred's a guy who had some health problems he had to deal with. He said now he has figured out he drinks a well over 100 ounces of water a day, 9 to 10 hours of sleep, and it's allowed his system to be able to handle the rigors of D1 basketball. That is a lot of hard I try to do 108 every day. Come on. Come on, man. You see all these bottles here. They'll be empty. Twenty to eleven with eleven twenty-six to play. Was rock steady. Yep. He did not panic. He said, guys, we're okay. We're going through something that none of us have ever experienced. 
we're fine. Let's get our legs under us. And they've done a really good job. Not a good job there on the ball handling as a steal comes back. And that's going to be a goaltend as Javon Garcia took it right to the rack. Hargrove showing off his verticality abilities as he pins it up against the class and they give him the two. It's a heck of a block, though. Yeah. Terrence can get up. No question about it. So, gradually, UMass has kind of pulled themselves back into this game after the kick. It's now a seven-point lead with 11-14 to play here in the first half. Winner moving on to the semifinals to take on St. Bonaventure. Travis Ford has seen enough. He says, let's get our best ball handler in. That's, of course, Yuri Collins, a sophomore from St. Louis. St. Bonaventure is really good, man. Yeah, no question about it. That guy can coach. McCall not happy with that. Tight defense coming from their captain, Carl Pierre, number 12. And he's going to be called for the foul on Collins. Uh, you're going to see, he's going to get his arm and body right there. You see the arm on the hip? Cannot do it. He has been a huge contributor for that UMass program, playing a starter ever since his freshman year. Highly touted recruit out of Boston. Ball knocked around. It's going to stay with the Billikens. So 20 seconds back on the shot clock, and Collins will reset the offense. Yeah, they're going to go to their center stack offense here. That ball took everything for Fred Thatch to get it to drop, but end result, it's another three. And it's a 10-point lead. Massachusetts has got to take care of the basketball, and then they've got to be able to finish when they can turn St. Louis over. One thing that St. Louis is pretty good at, taking care of the ball. One thing UMass is really good at, turning you over. Which one's going to give? Another turnover. Yeah, there's a guy, Trey Mitchell, the 6'9 sophomore to Pittsburgh, all-conference first team. And so far, just two points for him. He was quiet early, Cap, yesterday. He got going in the second half. But that was really at the point where it was pretty much all done because it was more than a 20-point lead over St. Joseph's. They, once they expanded it, it got to 16 twice, and you felt like, mm, can they make a little run here? And the answer was no. So with a nice block there, it was a two-on-one, and St. Louis comes away with nothing. Interior pass a little too hot, and Hassan French tracks it down. Now we've got a bit of a track meet here. The pass is coming fast and furious, and that was a little too much of a lead for Javante Perkins. Yeah, Yuri Collins, who's at the point, has got to be smarter with that ball. Travis is saying, guys, if we can get it and run, great. We've got a size differential in our favor. Right. Attack, attack, attack inside. Travis Ford wasn't too shabby of a guard himself. At Kentucky began his playing career though at Missouri. A lot of people forget about that, but man, correct. Was stellar in Lexington. Inside to Mitchell. Grabs the double team, kicks back out. That shot not falling. Javon Garcia had a good look. And so far, St. Louis's defense has been what's impressed me the most, Cap, because they are getting their double team, really just getting away with double teaming Trey Mitchell because so far. Minutemen not hitting the outside shot like they did yesterday. The ball stripped away by Fernandez and taken right back by Collins. See, they want to get the ball to French, but when Collins comes to the wing, they're not respecting his ability to shoot the ball. Yeah. Collins already with five points, make it seven, an opportunity to make it eight. Yuri Collins averaged just under five points a game, but nice hands here, and then taken right back. Right, but see what, what's ended up happening, when he goes to the wing, he wants to enter the ball to Hassan French, and the defender is saying, good luck, shoot the ball. And you've got to think if you're Matt McCall, the coach of the Minutemen, you're saying if Yuri Collins is going to be the guy that's going to beat us, we'll have to live with that. But Hassan French and Jordan Goodwin cannot go off tonight on us. Well said. That's exactly what the philosophy is. And it was yesterday St. Joe said, we're not letting the big guy Mitchell beat us. Guess what? They shot 70% from three at one point, and that's what puts you away. Yeah, Yuri Collins already with eight points, three of five shooting. He really is a pass-first traditional point guard. As Fernandez goes right at it, French pulls that one away. Watch, watch, watch. 
Hassan French thought about it for a second. He's going to go right at Mitchell. Can't get it to fall. Garcia comes away with it for the Minutemen. Deep three. Still can't get the touch back that they had yesterday. Gary Collins smartly will slow this one down with plenty of time on the shot clock and a 13-point lead. Good one off the glass, hard, can't get it to fall from the, the well, that floor, was, almost gets it to drop. That would have been an amazing degree of difficulty on that shot to get it to go. Nice Euro step, and French definitely affected that shot. Good one, wide open for three, Mitchell let him take it. And they're going to bring Mitchell foul as Javante Perkins crashing the board so far st louis looking pretty good capper hey lewis is rolling offensively and they are flexing their muscles there's he's seen double and triple teams throughout the first part of this game 737 to play in the first half it's all st louis by 13. and at the other end trey mitchell's trying to guard hassan french in this modified zone but he's got a close eye on him wherever French goes. That's a huge surprise. It's on French with no points so far. Underneath, look at that. The score maker is Yuri Collins, the guy that's averaging less than five points a game. And Yuri Collins is having himself a game now in double figures. Because if you watch that play again, they're backing off of him, going shoot it, and they lost it. Yep. That's the problem. They lost it. Gonna get this foul on Ronnie DeGray, the third on that moving screen. See, watch this. He's wide open because guess what? Fernandez turned his head, lost his man because they're not respecting his ability to shoot. And then here's the foul right there. Clipped him physically with the hip. Bam, gotcha. If you'd have told Matt McCall with seven minutes to play in the first half, Yuri Collins will have 20, 10 points and Hassan French will have none, he would take that every day and think, we're in this game, and they find themselves down at 15. And another man throwing the baseline free. A nice job by Fred Thatch losing his defender. That's become a theme here in the first half. Movement without the basketball. One team didn't play yesterday. One team did. And Mitchell with the bump and the harm. That's exactly what he's going to need possibly to get him started. Look at this one more time. Fred Thatch without the ball. Yeah, watch Fred Thatch. He's over in front of the UMass bench on the far side. Nobody knows where he's at. Here I come. And he finishes. You've got to find your man. And then Trey Mitchell, it's just a good physical battle. It's just a good play. That is a really good player, Trey Mitchell, against a man inside. It's like going up against a Pittsburgh Steeler middle linebacker. Yes. So it's 30-16, six and a half minutes to play here in the first half. And uh, that's called no defense as Javante Perkins took it right down the lane. Oh, my. 16-point lead. And if I'm Matt McCall, that's what I'm most disappointed in. Guys, I know we're struggling to score. We're not going to shoot 70% every day. Defensively, they've got to be better. Was it you always tell me? See ball, stop ball? Ball, you man, or stop the ball. Take away the middle of the paint. Carl Pierre with a much-needed three for the Minutemen. So UMass in this 2-3, in this kind of a 2-3 modified zone, it looks like. But then they switch back into a, a shell of defense, and it just doesn't seem to be working. They're just not able to locate players. And when wow. you get shots like that off of your shoulder for Fred Thatch, it's it's your day. Yeah, you wonder if the St. Joe's partisans are going, hey, Matt, how's it feel? Everything's going in. Everything's going in for the other team. Back down to Mitchell, coming off that three moments ago. He squares up and hits. So Mitchell coming alive. That's good news for the Minutemen faithful. He has a chance to be a really special player. He really does. Ray Mitchell now with seven points, averages over 18 a game. As someone who scouted in the league, I'm telling you, if that kid really dedicates himself to his diet and getting in the weight room and really, really looking at every opportunity to make him himself as good as he can be, 
he can be a really, really impactful player. Morgan found himself just wide open, and now UMass starting to warm up as Noah Fernandez, fresh off that 14-point performance, has cut the lead to 10. There's still some fight in the five seed, the UMass Minutemen, off a big win yesterday where they scored 100 points, a slow start here. Heading north and taking the head coaching job at UMass. So here we go, lead cut to 10, under five to play in the first half. What is Travis Ford gonna answer with? Well, it's nice when you can answer with a player like that, Javante Perkins, we've already seen him take it all the way to the hole for the dunk. This time he gets in there and gets the foul, so he'll go to the line. Again, we're seeing St. Louis be very aggressive. Not settling for a three. They are taking the ball hard to the basket and creating opportunities. Trey Mitchell looked like he was going straight up and down. We call that the principle of verticality, my friend. Javante Perkins, leading scorer for the Billikens. Some of the best news they've received in St. Louis in a while. He's decided he's going to return for another season because of the COVID exemption. So that's going to be a very good team next year. There's Travis. I think that made his day. Javante said, you know, Coach, I'm going to run one more year with you. How about that? That's got to help with recruiting, too. I mean, you think the talent they have in the St. Louis area for basketball, and then you bring in back guys like Yuri Collins and Javante Perkins. Jimmy Bell will be back. Especially if you can find a way to get into the NCAAs. Yeah, boy, just go so far in recruiting. We discussed at the top. Ahmed Fareed and Ron Thompson discussed it in the studio. This tournament is key for the Billikens if they want any chance. Some of the experts around say that uh, St. Louis is one of the first four out. Got to find a way to win and then to survive in advance. Mitchell with a nice fake up stop and he's going to get fouled as Jimmy Bell had some good defensive position. That's going to send Trey Mitchell back to the line, averaging over 18 points a game. All-conference first teamer. Here he shows you a little fake. Jimmy Bell bites on it. Now he's got the corner turned. Trying to cut into that 12-point lead. You got to think it's a win-win if UMass can get this thing down to single digits. If you take a look at the brackets and what you can expect, St. Bonaventure already threw today. 75-59 win over Duquesne. Winner of this game gets the Bonnies tomorrow, the conference champion in the regular season. And then coming up at 3.30 Eastern, VCU and Dayton. Before we close things out tonight, David Kaplan and myself will have the call with George Mason taking on the three seed in Davidson. Gary Collins just cutting through that token half-court pressure. Work a shot off, good one there to clean it up. He is so tough for... Uh, yeah, that swing type guy, yeah. he's physical. His shoulders allow him to get some separation and then just get the easy stick back. Good one already with 12 points, and that not going to rattle home. As Perkins takes it away, gets back to Collins. Look how quickly they move the ball up. They're always looking for Jordan Goodwin. That's, that's some smart basketball, isn't it? Here we go with that center stack attack again. Collins this time dribbled it off his foot foot and it's going to go back to UMass 351 to play here in the first half it's 38 26 right down the lane for Javante Perkins the senior from St. Louis worth noting St. Louis is a four seed again this year Let's see if Travis Ford and the Billikens can work their magic. And the five's in there as well, which is UMass this year. They're the five seed. Son French getting ready to check in. I want you to keep an eye on Travis Ford right now. Of all the coaches I've seen this year calling games, he will come out. He takes more liberty being on the court than anyone. This is this is casual right now, but he'll be two or three feet on the court. Just give me a second. Wow. Somehow, Kyra McCroy was able to keep his balance and stay in, and he puts it in. So we've got a 10-point game again. UMass just lingering around as the five seed. Down the lane, nice defense there by Trey Mitchell, avoiding the foul. Yeah, I don't know what the shot attempt was there. Yeah. 
That was going to be a high degree of difficulty. So now an opportunity to get down to single digits. Mitchell wanted the ball, calls for the ball, gets the ball. He's saying, get me the rock. He, and you got to have this mentality. He truly believes he's the best player on the floor. Keep it right rolling. now. Look at this. Keep it rolling, fellas. Get me the ball. They can't stop me. They've got it down to an eight-point lead. Remember, St. Louis went on a 10-0 run. Had this thing up as high as 14 points. And now it's down to seven. 2.57 to play here in the first half. Winner moving on to face St. Bonaventures in the semis. Hassan French with the ball. That's just too easy. Martin Linson, nice dish off from French. Yeah, really good job by French. Because you see him with the ball, you immediately think, I got to attack that. And then he makes the really smart pass. Cap, I know you're a brave man, but would you take a charge with Hassan French at full steam? And what you offer? <laughs> College game? No chance. Five-year Supermax deal in the NBA. He can run me over. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Wild shot there. Comes off. Doesn't hit anything. And it's corralled nicely by Jordan Goodwin, who hands it off quickly to Yuri Collins, who will slow things down. I thought Travis was going to walk the ball up with him. Did you see that? Telling you. <laughs> Funny. Inside to French who has yet to score. See, there comes the double again. And Linson driving in is going to be foul. He'll go to the line. Hassan French has not scored, averaging nine points a game, but he does have three assists, and his presence is always felt in the paint. But it's like when Trey Mitchell doesn't score for a while, he attracts so much attention that it opens other opportunities up for other guys. Look at this, coming in right at you. See how he steps into his bounce pass? Doesn't get fancy, doesn't get lazy. No French pastry, as the late Al McGuire would say. Just deliver it. Just get it there. Linson giving Travis Ford four points quickly off the bench. The junior from Dusseldorf, Germany. Another big body for the Billikens. Inside, hits them both. Quarter, a little bit of pressure coming from St. Louis just to slow UMass up a bit. Have them burn a little bit of clock. Never been a problem for UMass. They, they will come down and hoist up a three quickly if it is open. Carl Pierre now been quiet early in the first half. They go inside their big man, Trey Mitchell. Here comes the double. He kicks out. Fernandez open for a look. And back come the Billikens really quickly. Trey Mitchell thought about stepping into Javante Perkins, but wisely let him go as he had the angle. You see UMass pushing the ball up the court as quickly as they can. They just can't get themselves into any kind of flow. Got it down to eight and seven. And look at this. It quickly goes back up to 13 with a minute to play here in the first half in Richmond. Inside to French. French dissing down to Linson who goes up and over and he's fouled. Lentz is going to have to send yeah. him like a gift basket at the end and go, hey, man, thanks a lot. Look at this. Outlet pass. Look how quickly they get up the court. Mm. But when you get in that half court and here comes the double at Hassan French, Lentz just steps over it. Thank you. Javante Perkins with six points, averages almost 17 a game, leading score for St. Louis, and it's been the contributions of guys like Martin Linson and Yuri Collins. Linson now with six points, Collins with 10. I want to remind you, coming up on the U.S. Bank Halftime Report, St. Bonaventure Duquesne highlights and keys to the second half. I'm both Reed and Ron Thompson standing by in our NBC Sports studio. So a timeout onside the Robbins Center. Exciting first half of play. St. Louis taking control of this one over the last two minutes as Hassan French, who has been really good on assists, 
with three, but no points. Averaging 11, he's certainly a presence on the inside in the paint. As UMass trying to cut into this lead, they got it down to single digits just two minutes ago, and now it goes back up to 15. Ooh, big foul coming as Javon Garcia hits the deck hard. He ran into all of 6'8 junior Martin Linson out of Germany. I'm just telling you, the physicality that St. Louis has brought to defensively, taking the ball out of Trey Mitchell's hands, double-teaming him occasionally, but really going one-on-one -on -one at him a lot. There you see a hard foul. Takes its toll, man, when you played yesterday. If you're in the locker room with UMass and Matt McCall, Cap, what do you think we're going to hear? What do you think his emphasis is going to be for the second half? Defense. Guys, we can't give up all these breakaways, penetration up the middle. We'll make our shots. At least that's what I would say. Guys, we'll make our shots. And You've got to stop the ball. you got to think they're going to warm up at some point after the performance they had yesterday against St. Joseph's. I know it's a different defensive mindset, St. Joseph's and St. Louis. But you got to figure that as good a shooter as they have, at UMass, they're going to start hitting something here. Final 25 seconds to go. St. Louis going to play for the final. You see the shot clock and game clock differential. Linson on the outside, hands it off to French. French thought about it for a second. Goes back to Linson, who hands it wisely to Goodwin. He's been quiet over the last two or three minutes. Here's Yuri Collins. He's had success. He drives Angs. And they're going to call it offensive on the illegal screen. Give UMass an opportunity to possibly get this down to 10 with a three. Let's see this call again. I thought he might have shuffled his feet. Yes, he did. Oh, there you go. I just saw a body on the ground and Hassan French standing there. I thought he might have uh, taken some. I think one official was gonna, someone. was gonna call a foul. Yeah. So the travel violation on Yuri Collins, 8.5 seconds to play. UMass will get it in to Noah Fernandez. Down to five seconds. Fernandez lines up a three. Off the rim, almost hits. And that's how the first half will end with a 13-point lead for the Billikens. UMass getting it down to single figures. And then, Cap, it was a big offensive explosion for St. Louis again. Oh, you saw it. The Minutemen, the five seed, with the winner moving on to play St. Bonaventure, who won earlier today over Duquesne. Todd Harris, Dave Kaplan with you here from the Robbins Center in Richmond, Virginia, as we get set for second half play. And, Cap, I got to think UMass at some point has got to start hitting those outside threes like they did yesterday because that they're just too good of a shooting team to go this cold. They've got to make shots, but I thought Matt McCall was right on point with you when he said, we've got to get stops. They have got to attack defensively. They got to force some turnovers, and they got to take care of the basketball. Then on the offensive end, you're right, make shots. But it starts by grinding it out defensively. Ronnie DeGray getting things started off nicely for UMass there, getting a quick bucket to cut the lead to 11. Go inside to French, big body on big body. Trey Mitchell holds his ground, but an offensive rebound and goes right back to the Billikens and a fresh 20. Back inside to French, again short, this time Trey Mitchell cleans it up for UMass. So now an opportunity to get it back down to single digits, which they did with about four minutes to go in the first half before St. Louis went on another 6-0 run. You were, you know, very astute in the first half when you said if you told Matt McCall, hey, Hassan French is going to do nothing to this point to really impact the game scoring-wise, he would have said, sign me up. That time, Hassan French showing all of his athletic ability. Big man at 6'7", 240, but his first bucket of the game. Trey Mitchell coming right back at Jimmy Bell. And, and Jimmy Bell, to his credit, number 32 for St. Louis, is doing a good job defensively. But Trey Mitchell, as Travis Ford pointed out, he's a tough guard. Yeah, he's a. that's a great phrase. He's a hard guard. They're going to get Ronnie DeGray for the block on this one. Let's look at this Trey Mitchell on this, Bell. This is a pro move. That is a pro move. I mean, that is big time. That's going to send Javante Perkins to the line. This is the one area of his game where he's not seen a lot of time at the free throw line. 87% free throw shooter, but the leading score for the Billikens gets it done all over the court, averaging 17 points a game. It just seems like when UMass cuts into that lead, has some hope, gets it down to eight, nine points, 
St. Louis goes on a patented run. Deep range three and Trey Mitchell. Remember, he had one yesterday during that UMass barrage of threes where they hit 15 three-pointers against St. Joseph's, and he gets big one there. So now an 11-point lead. That ball is going to be picked off. Yeah, I mean, that is just a terrible possession. Yeah. For St. Louis, and uh, you talk about stepping out the three, bury that, baby hook in the lane. But it's a pro. But did Travis Ford tell us before at the half is the turnovers was really got him fired up. Correct. So Bell will take a seat. And on the turnover, an opportunity once again for UMass to cut into this 11-point lead. Remember, St. Louis did not play yesterday. They had the double by being one of the top four seeds. Trey Mitchell's going to go to the spin. This time he loses it, touches no one, so it'll go back to St. Louis. Yeah, he's had two turnovers, Todd, today. One he threw away to Travis Ford, yep. and then he has this one. Those are ones you can't afford when you're trying to come back. Gary Collins handling the ball nicely for St. Louis. When the ball's in his hand, Travis Ford feels pretty good about it. Collins already with 10 points. Outside shot comes up short. Linson corrals it in for the Billikens in another 20 seconds. Collins Offensive. Now. And then you see the screen coming. It was being set on Garcia. Yeah, there was no doubt that was an illegal screen. No doubt. Just watch here. Cannot move like that. You got to set. Your feet got to be shoulder width apart. Can't cap. He was set, up. and then he reset. Exactly. It was the reset that got him. Fernandez from the outside can't get it to drop. I mean, you talk about two different teams yesterday. 15 threes drop for UMass, and today they are struggling mightily. That one taken away by Mitchell from Linson. And another turnover yep. that shouldn't happen. Catch the ball. Better ball movement coming from the Minutemen. A trail by 11. 16.50 to play here in the ball game. And the block is going to be called on the drive. So nice work on the inside as Carl Piar, the team captain, with 14 points yesterday against St. Joseph's, will go to the line. Well, here's the dribble penetration. No doubt he is not set. He is just a click late getting over there. But I think UMass has done a you know a better job at the defensive end here early in the first three minutes and 13 seconds. Martin Linson quickly picking up his fourth foul, but I think that's why they have him. He's got five to use, and he's a big body. So the junior out of Dusseldorf, Germany, will take a seat, and I'll see if they can give him a little time off the court with 16.47 to play, and the lead remaining at 11. Collins handling the ball, no problem getting it to Jordan Goodwin, who had a great first half, 14 first half points. He's yet to score here in the second. Collins drops it down to French, who thought about the dunk and then laid it in nicely. Cairo McCrory was right there to defend it, but there's no way he's going to handle that big body of French. Oh, it was kind of a dunk. Yeah, kind of got it over the rim. Outside shooting woes continue for the Minutemen. E.J. Weeks might be one of those guys that could get him going. Remember, Weeks came off the bench and chipped in 14 points. Watch this nice pass from Yuri Collins. This is what he does. Step back around, hook pass it. Watch French. Out of my way. That's a lump. That's one of those. That's a layup dunk. Yeah, it is. Exactly. He just looks back. Take that. Hassan French. 6'7", senior out of Middletown, New York. Holds a school record for blocks with 222. It's averaged 16 points a game over the last three games. I think they're, they're talking to Travis Ford about being on the court. There's Ray Jacoletti's doing Jack his best job to bring him in. <laughs> coach, I've been there. I've been a head coach. Warning for being out of the box. You remember Todd I mentioned Harris it earlier? That. I told you, I, I, I'm a big fan of Travis Ford, but he takes more liberties being on court than any other coach. That was a Todd Harris special. 
I've watched him over a few games, and I, I'll see him now. Think, man, they've got an extra guy. He's got pants on, and he's on the court. Now it's Travis. And an easy jumper from Jordan Goodwin. So he gets his first bucket of the second half. The senior out of Centerville, Illinois. 13 double doubles this year. Weeks is the player I was talking about. If anyone's going to maybe give him a spark, it might be him. He had a big game yesterday off the bench. He did. Mitchell gets it to rattle home. I, I mean, I'm just telling you, I am more and more impressed with this kid. Trey Mitchell now with 17 points. That's just too easy. Attack the goal to score. Best way to beat pressure, attack the goal to score. You see so many teams that come across half court. Whew, we made it. Take it to the rim. Hassan French now with six points as we come up on 15 minutes to go. No one's going to pick up Collins, so he'll put up the shot, come up short. He already has 16, excuse me, 10 points. Got them all in the first half. And a wild shot there gets it to drop as Weeks Jr. goes to the left hand. UMass still hanging around. Can they cut into this lead and get it down to single? Nope. And the foul as we go under 14.45 to play. It's 57.44. How about your guy, Hassan French? Get out of my way. You can't handle me around the rim. Take that. 19. Absolutely. The trophy proudly displayed the Chaffin Center. No one seed has won the A-10 tournament since 2013. It has been a while, and it's just, I don't know if it goes to just the parody or just the craziness of the A-10 tournament, but it seems like if you are a 3, 4, or 5, you're in a good place. Hassan French misses at close range, goes hard off the glass. Yeah, that's one he wants back. He's got to make that shot. UMass hanging around, down by 13, 14, 22 to play in the game. The winner gets St. Bonaventure in the next round tomorrow on this same court. And a nice piece of work there as Cairo McCrory, the freshman out of Hartford, Connecticut, backs his way in for two. Hanging around, hanging around. That's what they are. They get a stop, they get a miss, they get a bucket. They're staying alive in this game. Oh, rounders? Did you put rounders on me? I did. Eddie KGB. <laughs> David Kaplan, folks, you're here all week. <laughs> Tip your waiters away. Devontae Perkins answers back with a nice little mid-range 10-footer. Soft off the back rim. He's got to find a way. UMass has got to find a way, as head coach Matt McCall said, of getting some defensive stops, and that's going to be an offensive charge and another turnover. Is he in the restricted area is my question. That's a close one. Nope, nope. He was not an official, and the gold feet were star. moving. There you go. Good job. 13 point lead, 13 30 to play, and the Bonnies waiting in the wings. We watched that St. Bonaventure game against Duquesne. Got a little chippy there in the second half, but man, just way too much talent. Nice defense on Javon Garcia taking away that layup from Yuri Collins. He's going up. Backs his way in. French. French just sheds Trey Mitchell at 6-9 and gets the basketball. And the refs are telling him, you know, you can't, you can't throw him away. He just tossed him out of the way. Right. He's saying to the official, where's the foul? Let's see if we can see it. Here you go. Yeah, that's absolutely a foul. Ten out of ten times. So French will take a seat, picking up his third personal foul. Ray Giacoletti's explaining it to him. Son, I know you got the guns to do that. You just can't. That is one well-put-together young man. Son yes. French, 6'7", 240 pounds. The next life, I want to be built like that. Ray Mitchell getting way deep into the paint. Linson comes in. Remember, Linson playing with four fouls, but with French going out, they're going to... He have to use up his last foul to give French a little bit of a breather and have him down the home stretch. Good matchup here with Fernandez guarding Yuri Collins. Collins with a nice pass on the inside, and they're going to get Ronnie DeGray the third, much to his dismay. He was just a half step late getting in there to try and deny that pass. <laughs> really, really a
astute pass, and there's the contact. Brett Thatch Jr. on the receiving end of that, so it'll be Yuri Collins inbounding it on the baseline. We talked about, wow, that's an athletic play right there. They were just throwing it up to Javante Perkins, and Carl Pierre was defending him and said, you know what, I'm not going to get posterized. I'll just go ahead and grab a hold of him. Well designed play. You wonder if that previous play was a setup for that. Linson with a dunk. Yeah, that's a really well designed play by Travis Ford. Mitchell from 12, hard off the heel. Usually you go, coaches design plays, players make plays. That was a Travis Ford special right there. Fernandez giving Yuri Collins some problems. Goes into the backcourt. Gets it back across with travel. And that foot slid just a bit too much. I thought that he dribbled it off his own foot. I, and it should have been over, over and back, back anyway, so. Let's get it one more time. Ah, no, it actually looks like it was off Fernandez's toe. Was that who it hit? Yeah. All right, so 12-15, clock running, 61-46, UMass Cap, we said before, they've got to find a way to get some buckets from the outside and then get some stops. Nice way to start. Go to your main man, Trey Mitchell. Yeah, it was too easy a, an entry. Too easy to dive it right into the block, and he's a hard guard. Mitchell's doing his part with 21 points so far. Linson with another tough screen. Collins finds a man on the wing. They'll go back inside to Linson, and it's knocked away. So a good stop there. We'll see if they can turn it into points after Fred Thatch Jr. commits the foul. So an opportunity for UMass to get it done, and Trey Mitchell doing his part cap. Yeah, really good job by the big guy. Square your shoulders, baby hook. try and keep his team in the ball game. I mean, that's a heck of a shot. We saw him step out to the three-point line. Here he is with the baby hook. I'm telling you, that's your guy. I really like the way he plays. And I'm, it, listen to me, Trey. Weight room, diet, commit yourself now to a process that a pro would follow. That kid can make a lot of money at the game. Averaging 18 points a game, sitting on 21, and he's going to go back to the line to add to that. Matt McCall saying he's become more of a vocal leader, and he's spending more time in the gym and the weight room, to your point, David. He did a really good job. He sets his screen, and then he rolls toward the basket. He has the ability, though, to run what we call pick and pop, where he can set a down screen and then pop out to the three-point line, and he's an accomplished perimeter player as well. Number 12, Martin Linson, the junior from Dusseldorf, Germany. He picks up his fifth foul, so they used him up. But Linson gave them the five fouls plus nine points for a guy that's only averaging five. So I think that's probably uh, Travis Ford will take that. 100%. Get that type of extra big body yep. put in there. 13-point lead, 11.33 to play. The winner of this game moves on to tomorrow's semifinals where the number one seed, St. Bonaventure, awaits. Still to come today, we've got VCU and Dayton coming up next, and then the nightcap tonight. David Kaplan and I will have that call with George Mason taking on the three seed in Davidson. That next game, VCU and Dayton, that's, that's intriguing. VCU and Dayton is going to be up and down. Two coaches that like to push the tempo. Mitchell hits them both, moving his total to 23 points. And full court pressure coming from the Minutemen. And they're going to get Fernandez on the reach. Well, we see the lot. They're calling it tight play. Yeah. Fernandez and Yuri Collins, they have been going at it all game long. Look, he is just all over it. Not a ton of contact, though. Fred Thatch will come back to help out. He can handle the rock as well. 11-point game. 11 minutes and 20 seconds to play. 
Is this the year of the Billikens? Do they defend what they did in 2019 by winning the A-10 tournament? A lot of experts feel that the Billikens have to get to the final to have a shot to be invited to the NCAA tournament. I read a great article that Stu Durando wrote in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. It said that Hassan French and Jordan Goodman arrived as friends. They will leave as brothers. They live together, they're best friends, and they said, we're not friends anymore, we're brothers. That was a really cool concept. They've gone through all this together. French and Goodwin seniors. Javante Perkins also a senior, but he has announced that he, because of the COVID exemption, he will be coming back for another year in St. Louis. Big possession here for UMass. Fernandez driving, hanging, can't get it to fall. Ball on the ground, and it's going to be a jump ball. Yuri Collins was trying to go, give me a timeout. But when you got multiple hands on the ball, it's tough. Man, he's got a good look at it, just couldn't get up and over. You see, see him with his hands going, timeout, timeout. Look at that battle. So on the possession area, it goes to the Billikens. Collins now receives it, gets across the timeline, racing down towards the middle, and his shot is blocked. Great help defense there by Cairo McCrory. Yeah, that, that had a high degree of difficulty to try and complete. Oh, the back-to-back -back defense leading to offense. And it's a 10-point game. Hanging around, and I was about to say to you, I think UMass done a really good job at smothering some shots. I think Yuri's had three of them blocked going to the rim. He's got off to a great start for St. Louis, picking up 10 points in the first half. Since then, he's been quiet, and McCoy's going to get called for that foul on the drive. How about this? I love the defense that leads to offense. So you watch that block. That's just a big-time block. That, I mean, he had that thing sized up, and then let me walk into a three-point shot. Boom. Ten-point game. Remember, these teams played less than a week ago in St. Louis, and it was all Billikens at 78-57. And here are the Minutemen hanging around with the four seed, trying to cut this lead down as Perkins steps into that first foul shot and buries it. Just can't seem to get past that eight, nine point margin. Hits them both. And that ball dribbled right off the foot of TJ Weeks. Those are just momentum busters, aren't they? They are. They're very frustrating. He feels like he's got a move made. Right off the just knee. right off his own knee. Matt McCall trying to find a way to crack this St. Louis offense to get two or three stops strung together and get his outside shooters an opportunity to start hitting some big threes like they did yesterday. That one. Hard off the back of the glass. Here come the Minutemen. Don't have the numbers. Fernandez backs it back out to Mitchell. He'll take the three. And hit it. You tell me that guy doesn't have a future. I'm going to tell anyone who says to me that kid can't play in the pros. They're nuts. He can step out. He can take it to the basket. He can defend. Block shots. Coming off a 15-point, 11-rebound performance yesterday against St. Joseph's. Trying to give his squad another game to play. Look at this. Left it hanging. The world is your oyster, big fella. You have every opportunity to make a lot of money at this game. 9.15 to play. They've got it down to single digits. This is going to be a huge stop here for UMass if they can come away with it. And instead, they're going to send St. Louis to the line to shoot two as Trey Mitchell. Javante Perkins will go to the line. That'll be his third Good foul on Mitchell. Javante 
Oh, just his second. I thought it was his third. I was not good at that. He should, he should be good for a little longer. Cap, I got to ask you, if St. Louis is successful and holds off UMass here with nine minutes to go, uh, do you like the matchup with them and, and St. Bonaventure? I think it's a, a heavyweight title fight. Yeah. I think St. Bonaventure is really, really good. I think both teams are exceptionally well coached. The St. Louis team that was 7-1 and one in December that I watched, if that team shows up, yep. that's going to be a, a whale of a ball game. Still more than nine minutes to play in this one, and UMass, as we know from yesterday's experience, can get extremely hot from the outside. They hit 15 threes yesterday, up to 59 points in the first half on their way to a 100-point output. Good defense there, denying the entry pass. It's on French knocking it out of bounds. French has three personals, so he has to be careful because there's still nine minutes left in this game. It's got to start sooner rather than later. Those outside shots have got to start falling. And to Matt McCall's credit, they've got to find a way to get some stops. String together one, two, or three, and then answer back with some wide open threes. Corey thought about it, and there we go. Carl Pierre, the captain, steps up and buries one. That was a huge three as Pierre now with six points. All of a sudden, it's an eight-point game, and you get a little extra juice defensively, you got to get a stop. And the foul on the drive. Good guy to put the ball in his hands, Javante Perkins. How about Carl Pierre? Senior captain steps up deep. That is a deep three. And then there's the foul right there. So they're going to get Fernandez. He picks up his fourth foul. That sets Perkins to the line. Boy, every time they get it down to eight, nine, it just seems like St. Louis goes to the line, hits two, maybe gets a stop at a bucket. And Perkins missing the front end, an 87% free throw shooter missing that first one. Javante, a St. Louis product, stays home to play his ball for head coach Travis Ford. This is a bolt, but the rebound. Fred Thatch Jr. can't answer. So a good stop for UMass on this opportunity. And might they be able to close it even more? Mitchell will line up the three off the rim. Yeah, a little too quick. It's got to come in rhythm. Run your offense inside, out. Collins gets deep. Nowhere to go with it. Dumps it down to French. French back to Collins. Not known for three-point shooting, but he is now. Wow. Fury Collins steps up, hits his first bucket of the second half to give him 13 points, and more importantly, pushes it back to an 11-point lead. Well, you double Jordan Goodwin, Javante Perkins, Hassan French, and I don't think he was planning on Yuri Collins chipping in a, a nice, cool 13. Absolutely. I, if you had said, here, draw it up, and we tell you where Hassan French is, he did not think Yuri Collins would be able to do that, and he did. Hassan French just with six points guarding Trey Mitchell, his major assignment. Mitchell just driving his way in. That's something you don't see very often. Someone bullying Hassan French, and Mitchell got all the way down there but could not convert. The ball ends up in the hands of Collins. That's why I talked to you about Trey Mitchell having to get in the weight room. Yeah. He has to be able to match the strength of a guy like Hassan French. Collins being guarded by Garcia. Gives it off to Perkins. Perkins pulls up from 10 and buries it. Got it back up to 13. You feel like if you're St. Louis. All right, guys, we took a punch. Had a chance to get it cut down to six, and it's back to 13. But it's just one of those, it was just moments ago that it was eight. Carl Pierre lines up the three, can't hit it, comes off, and Perkins rips it away, hands it immediately off to Collins, who will walk it up. There's got to be a UMass run. They've got to find a way to string together one, two, maybe three three-pointers or a couple buckets in a row and get that stop. 
And it's not coming there. Javante Perkins is feeling it. That's the lost start, isn't it? The 12-footer. The mid-range oh. game. The drive and one as Javon Garcia says, I'm not going to wait for the threes to fall. I'm going to take it on my own shoulders and take it to the rim. 6-14 to play. UMass with one last gasp. And they get it done. They trail by 13, 74-61. Perkins just feeling it from mid-range. Then earlier, St. Bonaventure's getting past to Kane to get their spot into semi-final action for tomorrow. And they will face the winner of this one, UMass and St. Louis, with the Billikens really dominating this game from the starts. UMass has been hanging around, getting it down to 7, 8, 9. They just can't get the stops they needed. And Matt McCall has said it at halftime, we've got to find a way to get stops and string together some baskets. St. Louis happy to slow the pace down, get into their half-court offense. Jordan Goodwin decides to back it out. Goodwin with 18 points. Step back with the fake, gives it off to Perkins, open for the three, hard off the front of the iron, and Goodwin walks away with it. And that is, that's a defensive killer. It is. Play great defense, and then they come away with another fresh 20. And they've done such a good job on Hassan French, yep. and then all of a sudden, Somebody else just walks in and grabs the offensive rebound. Holton Mitchell is now checked in for UMass. Deep range three. And another offensive rebound. Goodwin thought about taking the shots. And you know what, fellas? I think Coach Ford would like us to slow this down and back it out a bit. Yeah, Fred Thatch snatched that one down. Ball taken away, and Thatch gets tangled up with Garcia. Jump ball favors UMass. You know, give Fred Thatch a lot of credit. Yeah. He's played 22 minutes. He gives you everything he's got out there. He's four out of five from the floor. He's one for one from three. He's got you four rebounds. That's just a really good, physical, tough play. Redshirt sophomore. That's from Missouri. Coming back next year. Good opportunity now. Carl Pierre, the captain, and he's going to be fouled as he's coming across the top. In the sub again. They're going to keep going to that sub with Colton Mitchell, who's a pretty solid three point shooter, the sophomore of Fort Myers, Florida, to come back into the game. Pierre, that was one of the athletes that Matt McCall pointed out. He and Mark Gasparini, the seniors, that said that was one of the toughest things about the COVID season is not being able to give them a proper send-off in a senior night on campus. You would hope that the schools around the country could all take care of that, you know, maybe next season. He has been so impactful for UMass's program starting since he was a freshman. Highly recruited player out of Boston. 14 points yesterday versus St. Joe's, averaging 13 a game. He's got it down to a 10-point lead. They need a stop here, the Minutemen. Hangs on the rim, gets right back in, tipped in. Wow! Yeah, just, you can tell the legs of UMass are a little tired. Just St. Louis, they sniffed that opportunity to move on. Click another win in their column, and they are not quitting on the offensive glass. Three white jerseys crashing the boards. Carl Pierre lines up a three, can't get it to hit. And Perkins and Mitchell get tangled up. Jump ball goes the way of the Billikens. There's the ball just a little short. There is the tie-up. And again, alternate possession to the Billikens. So four minutes, just over four minutes to play. Cap, I've said it multiple times here in the last six or seven minutes. There's got to be a point here. If the Minutemen want a chance, they've got to find a way to get a stop or two. They've got to find a way not only to get a stop, but they can't give up offensive rebounds. They've gotten you know, a handful of really good stops, and they can't find a way. It's going to be an offense over the back foul on Hassan French. 
So Hassan French picking up his fourth personal foul, but it's Billikens who have stayed active, crashing the offensive boards. Keep re-racking, get me another opportunity, just keep pounding away. The 4-5 matchup in the A-10 tournament tied here. David Kaplan with you, 3.48 to play. With the winner moving on to take on St. Bonaventures tomorrow in the semifinals. The Bonnies, the number one seed, winning the regular season title outright. That's a big matchup. You talked about it being a heavyweight fight, Cap. That is, uh, yeah. St. Louis, the way they started the season off, if they can get back to that form against St. Bonaventure, the way they're playing now. Ooh. Two of my favorite coaches to deal with, really like the guys. Mark Schmidt used to work on a, I believe it was a Coca-Cola truck. And he said, I can't do this. And he took a job making literally no money as a basketball coach. And he ran out of money. Finally said to his wife, all right, I'll go get a regular job. And then someone called and said, give it one more run. I'll pay you nine grand. Okay. I'm in. One more run is coaching, not working for the truck. Coaching. And there you see the resume for St. Bonaventure, as we said, the regular season champions, 14-4, 11-4 in conference. There's your net ranking of 29th. Strength of schedule, 109, but their quad one record, 2-2 two two with wins at Richmond, at Davidson, and then three, four losses, of course, Dayton, which I don't think Dayton's a bad loss. I mean, I, Dayton's been up and down. They haven't been consistent like they have in the past, but, man, they're, they're playing some good ball, and Coach Cran has got his guys. He's got some athletes. Mark told me he had, Mark Schmidt, he had one of those shirts with the, with the little name tag, Mark. He goes, I'm delivering soda pop, going, what am I doing? <laughs> and he made it. They sure like him up in Olean, no question they about love it. Him. Spent some time on Sip, Skip Prosser's staff. So I guess you can say he comes off the Skip Prosser tree. Mm -hmm. 3.30 to go in this one. It's a 12-point lead. UMass has to find a way to generate some points quickly, more importantly, get some stops. See, now, yesterday, there's no question they're pulling the trigger on that three, and now they're a little bit more gun-shy. As Carl Pierre hoists up a three, it's ripped away by Fred Thatch, Jr. Yeah, you just, second day in a row, playing, you know, with your season on the line. You know, you lose any of them, you're out. Legs get a little tired, you just don't get the lift into the shot. Couple numbers for you as we go under three minutes to play. St. Louis 15 to 3 on offensive rebounds and 11 to 3 on second chance points. That's some body control there. Stefante Perkins, leading scorer, gets two more. Yeah, he had that dunk early that got them yeah. rolling. Perkins now with 23. Goodman with 18. Yet 13 from Collins. French sitting on eight points. But this has been French's biggest contribution, trying to corral Trey Mitchell. Collins gets tied up, calls a timeout, and plenty of those, and 14-point lead with 2.20 to play. We'll be back at the Robbins Center in a moment. He's out there talking some football with Jack Collinsworth. Some fine young gentlemen. Jack and Corey are two fine young gentlemen. You are exactly That's correct. Best way to say it. St. Louis on top by 14 with 2.20 to go. And the Billikens are going to try to run this one out, stay healthy, get everyone off the court, get off their feet, and get ready for tomorrow's big matchup against St. Bonaventure. And you mentioned two great coaches, Mark Schmidt and Travis Ford, going head-to-head. -head. Matching wits. Yeah, no question. Garcia with the foul on Collins. Garcia picking up his fourth at this point. And I just, the time is, is all but expired. I know there's still 2.03, but just, UMass just does not have that outside shooting touch they had yesterday. And give credit to St. Louis on their defense. They certainly extended it that way. And, and I guess there's no way you can expect a team to be that hot two games in a row, hitting 15 threes like they did yesterday. No, yesterday was the outlier, much as you would hope you could do it all the time. And Matt McCall knows that. That's why he told us at the half, yeah. stops, stops. We got to get stops on defense. Bright future for UMass and Matt McCall after his fourth year this year. Really strong young candidate. And you 
UMass lucky to have him as he came from the Florida program. Wow. That drive and nice help by Javante Perkins as he comes over to get the stop. And then a little whistle and call the foul on Ronnie DeGray, the third. That's his fifth. Yeah. So his season will come to an end. But that block, I don't know if we could see it again. It was like he put an umbrella up over it. It was... Man, there you go. That one, get that out of here. And then he grabs the rebound. So Ronnie DeGrace steps off after six points, coming off a 19-point performance yesterday. Just a freshman out of Parker, Colorado. So we can start talking about the matchup. As we said already, St. Bonaventures will face off against St. Louis. It'll be the 1-4 matchup. And as we've said in the A-10 tournament, hasn't been a number one seed win this tournament since 2013. Easy, easy. Easy, easy. Still trying to run that offense, getting it down below. Nice play in by Kyra McCrory, another freshman at Hartford, Connecticut. They've got a bright future in UMass. They really do. Talking with Matt McCall before the tournament began, and he said, you know, his first year or two, he went the transfer route, trying to get them back on, trying to get some scoring. But he said he was looking for the right culture. He wants the right culture. And I think you know what I'm talking about, what Billy Donovan had down in Florida. You get the right kids, the right culture in your program, and good things happen. Donovan taking his squad to a couple national championships. Yeah, we, when I was coaching, we used to, at the start, take transfers. Oh, right. we can get the guy from the, which, get the big school. Experience, scoring right. ability, yeah. Usually, it's hard to win with, a, with too many transfers because they take over the culture. And you usually want to have your seniors p police the locker room. They set the tone how everything runs. And then your freshmen learn from the upperclassmen. Too many transfers is tough. Trey Mitchell downside. Gets another bucket to add to his stat line. Yep. Mitchell did his part, no question about it today. Came into this game averaging 18 points a game, and he comes away with 30. 30 points and yep. at UMF. I do remember watching Dr. J and Bill Walton match off in the 77 NBA championship. How about that? But the way of the Portland Trail Blazers. Your club. <laughs> So they'll run out the final minute five here in Richmond. And the second quarter final will go in the book. I want to remind you, still two more games coming to you live here on NBCSN as the A-10 tournament continues. VCU and Dayton coming up after this. And then tonight, David Kaplan and I will be back to call the George Mason and Davidson. That will be the 6-3 matchup. Another intriguing game with Davidson as Trey Mitchell will come out of the game. His night is done. And again, a 30-point performance for him and six rebounds. Yeah, Matt McCall's thinking, all right. He's already starting to think about next year. Yeah, let, let's get going. St. Bonaventure. Coach Mark Schmidt, their squad, the Bonnies waiting. They will take on St. Louis tomorrow. You'll see that game It'll come up. 6 p.m. And then there'll be a little bit of a break before they transfer over to Dayton for the championship. Nice inside move there by Javon Garcia. Matt McCall calls a timeout, wants to get some players in who haven't had an opportunity to play. Yep. And he gives you the, let's go. Yeah. And everything else. Gasparini, the 6'10 grad out of Moscow, Russia. By way of American University, Carl Pierre, the captain, walks off the court probably for the last time for the Minutemen. No major upsets so far. I think one of the biggest surprises we've seen was the shooting performance that UMass had yesterday against St. Joseph's, making 15 threes. But earlier today, Duquesne gave St. Bonaventure a, a game. It got a little chippy there late as. 
Yuri Collins drives and gets fouled, but it'll be St. Bonaventure and St. Louis moving on. Who do you got in VCU, Dane? I'm going to put you on the spot on that one. Who do you think advances? I am going to take VCU. Okay. They're playing in Richmond, and while it's not going to be packed and all of that, I'm going to take VCU in a really tight ball game. I'm excited to let you buy us some food, and I'm going to sit right here and watch it. Word is that Bones Highland has been cleared to play. We'll see if and how much he does play. And then, of course, tonight, George Mason taking on Davidson with Coach McKillop as Carl Pierre takes a seat and thinks about the last four years in his time as a UMass Minuteman. Collins will end up with 17 points. A young man that averages 4.8 ends with 17 on the night and five assists and it does go final it's a 14 point win as the four seat takes down the five seat two great coaches there travis ford and matt mccall at umass minute run is